All right, welcome back from spring break, my friends. As you can see, it was a lot longer this year than most years for, for me, okay? But today is our big one school, one book review. And from listening to my friends out there and seeing these beautiful costumes around, and seeing this standing cane that confuses me. <laughs> I'm guessing that you know kind of maybe what the book already is. But well, we're still gonna have the big reveal today, my friends. Now let's talk about what one school, one book is. Pardon me, my hips and knees are little. Now one school, one book is as a school. We all get a book that we read together, and each one of you will get your own book that you get to keep forever and ever. And over, yeah, okay? And over the next few weeks as a school, we're gonna read it together, we're gonna do fun activities, and then at the very end in April, we have a big celebration with the family night. Sound good? Okay, now, it takes an awful lot of work to get all this together, okay? So take a look up at that slide. There's a lot of people in our community that have helped out to make this all possible so we can purchase all the books and decorations and make sure we're ready for the family night coming up. So a shout out to our REMC of Fulton County, FOI is formerly TCU. Yes, thank you for the union, the Times Theater. RTC TV 4, shout out. Hey, Milton Church, Sio Design, Parkman, Optimus Brunch, thank you. Hey, the Rochester Rotary Club, Lions Club, Hope Shally, the Riddle PTO, Bill and Joanne Newton, Dr. and Mrs. DJ Ron Welter, Ryan and Holly Clevenger, and our guest reader. Ever since I did, bad things have been happening to me. 
My hair's been growing faster. I've been losing things. I've been smelling bad. I mean, I always smell bad, so you guys need to play. But long story short, it's not good. It's cursed. It's not good at all. So, don't tell Mr. B I did this either.
a shout out to RTC. They, um, we have our local celebrities, one being Mr. B, um, that are reading each chapter from this book. And we can go online and click on a link. So at night, if we want someone to read the chapter to us, we can have that. Or you might even listen to it during class, something like that. So every day, we're going to read a little bit of the book. And today, we're going to start with chapters one and two. Okay, so get your book ready. We're going to listen up here. I'm the first guest reader, so we'll see how I do. And uh, we'll listen to chapters one and two. All right. Hey there, Riddle. Our book this year is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Gold Dahl and illustrated by Quinn Blake. Let's start with chapter one. Chapter one. Here comes Charlie. These two very old people are the father and mother of Mr. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine. And these two very old people are the father and mother of Mrs. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina. This is Mr. Bucket. This is Mrs. Bucket. They have a small boy whose name is Charlie Bucket. This is Charlie. How do you do? And how do you do? And how do you do again? He is pleased to meet you. The whole of this family, the six grown-ups, Count and little Charlie Bucket, live together in a small wooden house on the edge of a great town. The house wasn't nearly large enough for so many people. And life was extremely uncomfortable for them all. There were only two rooms in the place altogether, and there was only one bed. The bed was given to the four old grandparents because they were so old and tired. They were so tired they never got out of it. Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine on this side and Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina on that side. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket and little Charlie Bucket slept in the other room upon mattresses on the floor. In the summertime this wasn't too bad, but in the winter Freezing cold drafts blew across the floor all night long, and it was awful. There wasn't any question of them being able to buy a better house, or even one more, one more bed to sleep in. They were far too poor for that. And Mr. Bucket was the only person in the family with a job. He worked at a toothpaste factory, where he sat all day long at a bench and screwed the little caps onto the tops of the tubes of toothpaste after the tubes had been filled. But a toothpaste cap screwer has never paid very much money. Poor Mr. Bucket, however hard he worked and however fast he screwed on the caps, was never able to make enough to buy one half of the things that so large a family needed. There wasn't even enough money to buy proper food for them all. The only meals they could afford were bread and margarine for breakfast, boiled potatoes and cabbage for lunch, cabbage soup for supper. Sundays were a bit better. They all looked forward to Sundays because then, although they had exactly the same, everyone was allowed a second helping. The buckets, of course, didn't starve, but every one of them, the two grandfathers, the two grandmothers, Charlie's father, Charlie's mother, and especially little Charlie himself, went about from morning till night with a horrible, empty feeling in their tummies. Charlie felt the worst of all. And although his father and mother often went without their own share of lunch or supper so that they could give it to him, it still wasn't nearly enough for a growing boy. He desperately wanted something more filling and satisfying than cabbage and cabbage soup. The one thing he longed for more than anything else was chocolate. Walking to school in the mornings, Charlie could see great slabs of chocolate piled up high in the shop windows. He would stop and stare and press his nose against the glass, his mouth watering like mad. Many times a day, 
You would see other children taking creamy candy bars out of their pockets and munching them greedily, and that, of course, was pure torture. Only once a year, on his birthday, Charlie Bucket ever got to taste a bit of chocolate. The whole family saved up their money for that special occasion. And when the great day arrived, Charlie was always presented with one small chocolate bar to eat all by himself. And each time he received it on those marvelous birthday mornings, he would place it carefully in a small wooden box that he owned and treasure it as though it were a bar of solid gold. And for the next few days, he would allow himself only to look at it never to touch it. Then at last, when he could stand it no longer, he would peel back a tiny bit of the paper wrapping at one corner to expose a tiny bit of chocolate. And then he would take a tiny nibble, just enough to allow the lovely, sweet taste to spread out over his tongue. The next day, he would take another tiny nibble, and so on and so on. And this way, Charlie would make his 10 cent bar of birthday chocolate lasts for more than a month. But I haven't yet told you about the one awful thing that tortured little Charlie, the lover of chocolate, more than anything else. This thing, for him, was far, far worse than seeing slabs of chocolate in the shop windows or watching other children munching creamy candy bars right in front of them. It was the most terrible, torturing thing you could imagine. And it was this. In the town itself, Actually, within sight of the house in which Charlie lived, there was an enormous chocolate factory. Just imagine that. And it wasn't simply an ordinary, enormous chocolate factory either. It was the largest and most famous in the whole world. It was Wonka's factory, owned by a man called Mr. Willy Wonka, the greatest inventor and maker of chocolates that has ever been seen. What a tremendous, marvelous place it was. It had huge iron gates leading to it, and a high wall surrounding it, and smoke belching from its chimneys, and strange whizzing sounds coming from deep inside it. And outside the walls, for half a mile around in every direction, the air was scented with the heavy, rich smell of melted chocolate. Twice a day, on his way to and from school, Little Charlie Bucket had to walk right past the gates of the factory. And every time he went by, he would begin to walk very, very slowly. He would hold his nose high in the air and take long, deep sniffs of the gorgeous, chocolatey smell all around him. Oh, how he loved that smell. And oh, how he wished he could go inside the factory and see what it was like. Chapter 2. Mr. Willy Wonka's factory. In the evenings, after he had finished his supper of watery cabbage soup, Charlie always went into the room of his four grandparents to listen to their stories and afterwards to say goodnight. Every one of these old people was over 90. They were as strong as prunes and as bony as skeletons and throughout the day until Charlie made his appearance. They lay huddled in their one bed two at either end with nightcaps on there to keep their heads warm, dozing the time away with nothing to do. But as soon as they heard the door opening and heard Charlie's voice saying, Good evening, Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine and Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina, then all four of them would suddenly sit up, and their old wrinkled faces would light up with smiles of pleasure. And the talking would begin. They loved this little boy. He was the only bright thing in their lives. His evening visits were something that they looked forward to all day long. Often, Charlie's mother and father would come in as well and stand by the door, listening to the stories that the old people told. And thus, for perhaps half an hour every night, this room would become a happy place, and the whole family would forget that it was hungry and poor. One evening, Charlie went in to see his grandparents. He said to them, is it really true that Wonka's chocolate factory is the biggest in the world? True, cried all four of them at once. Of course it's true. Good heavens, didn't you know that? It's about 50 times as big as any other. And is Mr. Willy Wonka really the cleverest chocolate maker in the world? My 
Welcome to your bowl night, said Grandpa Joe, raising himself up a little higher on his pillow. Mr. Willy Wonka is the most amazing, the most fantastic, the most extraordinary chocolate maker the world has ever seen. But everybody knew that. I knew he was famous, Grandpa Joe. And I knew he was very clever. Clever, cried the old man. He's more than that. He's a magician with chocolate. He can do anything, anything he wants. Isn't that a fact, my dears? The other three old people nodded their heads slowly up and down and said, absolutely true. Just as true as can be. And Grandpa Joe said, you mean to say I've never told you about Mr. Willy Wonka and his factory? Never, answered little Charlie. Good heavens above, I don't know what's the matter with me. Will, will you tell me now, Grandpa Joe, please? Well, I certainly will. Sit down beside me on the bed, my dear, and listen carefully. Grandpa Joe was the oldest of four grandparents. He was 96 and a half. That is just about as old as anybody can be. Like all extremely old people, he was delicate and weak. And throughout the day, he spoke very little. But in the evenings, Charlie, his beloved grandson, was in the room. He seemed in some marvelous way to grow quite young again. All his tiredness fell away from him, and he became, became as eager and excited as a young boy. Oh, what a man he is! cried Grandpa Joe. Did you know, for example, that he has himself invented more than 200 new kinds of candy bars? Each with a different scent. Each far sweeter and creamier and more delicious than anything the other other chocolate factories can make. Perfectly true, cried Grandpa Josephine. And he sends them all to all the four corners of the earth. Isn't that so, Grandpa Joe? It is, my dear, it is. And to all the kings and presidents of the world as well. But it isn't only candy bars that he makes. Oh, dear me, no. He has some really fantastic inventions up his sleeve. Mr. Willy Wonka had. Did you know that he's invented a way of making chocolate ice cream so it stays cold for hours and hours without being in the icebox? You can even leave it lying in the sun all morning on a hot day and it won't go running. That's impossible, said little Charlie, staring at his grandfather. Of course it's impossible, cried Grandpa Joe. It's completely absurd. Mr. Willy Wonka has done it. Quite right, the others agreed, nodding their heads. Mr. Wonka has done it. Then again, Grandpa Joe went on, barely slowly now so that Charlie wouldn't miss a word. Mr. Willy Wonka could make marshmallows that taste the violence, and rich caramels that change color every 10 seconds as you suck them, and little tenderly sweets that melt away deliciously the moment you put them between your lips. You can make chewing gum that never loses its taste, and candy balloons that you can blow up to enormous sizes before you pop, pop them with a pin and gobble them up. And by a most secret method, you can make lovely bluebird's eggs with black spots on them. Put one of these in your mouth, it gradually gets smaller and smaller until suddenly there's nothing left except a tiny little pink sugary baby bird sitting on the tip of your tongue. Grandpa Joe paused and ran the point of his tongue slowly over his lips. It makes my mouth water just thinking about it, he said. I too, said little Charlie, but please go on. While they were talking, Mr. and Mrs. Bucket. Charlie's mother and father had come quietly into the room, and now both were standing just inside the door listening. Tell Charlie about that crazy Indian prince, said Grandma Josephine. He'd like to hear that. You mean Prince Pondicherry? said Grandpa Joe, and he began chuckling with laughter. Completely dotty, said Grandpa George. But very rich, said Grandma Georgina. What did he do? asked Charlie eagerly. Listen. Chapter? No. no. Was that at the end of the chapter? Yeah. Okay, good deal, good deal. All right. 
So we have a couple more things here to go over before we wrap up. So make sure that you're keeping up because uh, in the morning announcements now, we'll have trivia questions that go with the book. Okay? So the, the questions will be over the chapters that you read the night before. Okay? So just a heads up on that. Mrs. Zion, you had some things to go over as well with the Bartman Optimist Bunch, I believe. So I'm going to pass the microphone on to you. Boys and girls, it wouldn't be Charlie and the Chocolate Factory if we didn't allow you an opportunity to get a golden ticket yourself. How many of you would like a golden ticket to go to the Chocolate Factory? Well, we are going to make that happen for you. So you see this little display here? Each morning for the next two weeks, starting tomorrow, the Barkman Optimist Bunch will be here at the stand. And for a dollar, you get a chance to spin the wheel. And whatever number you land on, that's the candy bar you get. Some are this size. Some are this size. Or it could be that size. We have 20 golden tickets hidden in these candy bars that you have a chance to win. Now, we are going to ask that you only spend a dollar at a time. Your teachers do not want you all sugared up for an entire school day, so you only get one opportunity, hopefully, per day. So, bring your dollars to, a dollar tomorrow uh, to get a chance to win. This, like I say, will be open before school starts, and it'll be closed at 8.15. So, however many people we can run through by 8.15, uh, that is our goal. If you receive a golden ticket, we would like for you to go to the office and we will have a document for you to sign there and then we have a special trip planned to the South Bend Chocolate Factory for 20 of you. All right? So enjoy, save up your dollars, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you, Workman Optimus Bunch. That sounds like a great opportunity there. So 20 golden tickets are out there. Woo! All right. Teachers, is there anything else I need to cover before we wrap up? Are we good? We're going to be right on um, location for us. We'll be right down the hall here. Okay? And I do need to see the Barkman Optimist Bunch uh, to stay here after uh, dismissal today. Okay, and one last thing, we had a, uh, a big vote before spring break for Mr. Josh's beard. Come on up, Mr. Josh. And the winner was... Rainbow! Thanks, Mr. Josh. You're awesome. So, maybe we'll get to vote again, but, but, but Rainbow came through. Okay, friends, now these are your books. I think your teachers are gonna get your stickers and the names in them. Okay, so your name will be in your book, but keep track of that so we have it. Okay, there's lots of stuff planned for the, the next few weeks. So thank you for coming down for the big one school, one book reveal. Welcome back from spring break, and have a great day, my friends. Teachers, they're all yours. Yeah.